Stay frosty and head over to EasyMutt.com for the cheapest mutt coins on the market. And when I say cheapest, I mean it. We're talking 1 million coins for around 40 bucks. Use code DIRECTOR for 5% off. Yo, what up, brothers? What's up? It's the Director. Chargers fans, we're going to be talking about cap casualties today because it's going to be a different season. It's going to be a different year. Uh, financially, a lot of teams are in trouble. And as a result of that, we might see a lot more cap casualties than we've seen in the past. Now, a good example of a cap casualty maybe for the Chargers would be Trey Turner, who is $11.5 million against our cap right now. Uh, he definitely didn't have a great year last season, and the Chargers could uh, get out of that contract with no dead money if they decided to. And uh, that's that's a good example of somebody that you know uh, might hit the open market that may be a good solution for another team that doesn't just really make sense for the Chargers. Another name that's been brought up is Mike Williams, uh, $15.5 million against the cap right now for the Bolts. And uh, there's been talks about him getting traded maybe to the Browns in a package, or not the Browns, the Ravens in a package for Orlando Brown Jr., that's something to consider that would save us a lot of cap space as well. And again, the reason this is happening is because the NFL right now is at a uh, estimated $185 million cap. And that is significantly lower than what we've seen in the past. And I guess on the grapevine and stuff, I've been hearing that this number might be closer to like $180 million, $181 million. And that puts a lot of teams in trouble. Now, there's some teams like the Jags, the Colts, the Jets, who are going to be just fine. And they might be able to take advantage of a different market this season due to uh, a lack of funds from a lot of different teams. The Chargers are down here at number nine at $33 million. Again, it's probably going to be lower than that. And then there's going to be another, there's going to be a lot of teams down here, man, that are in trouble. The Saints, $70 million over the cap. The Eagles, $41 million over the cap. This is going to result in some tough decisions for some teams, man. They're going to have to let go of some maybe good players in order to help their cap situation to even compete in the year. They're going to have to fix this. They're going to have to get you know, the, the $70 million over the cap, uh, a situation figured out before the new uh, league year begins. So in today's video, I found an article that uh, kind of lays out a lot of these players that could be potential cap casualties. We'll be trying to identify some that the Chargers could go after. I haven't really looked at this list. I want to kind of live react with you guys and maybe give everybody else an idea of uh, the players that could be cut from their teams, in uh, in which case uh, they'll be saving some money and maybe helping out their cap situation. So that's going to be the topic conversation today. Very interesting. Hopefully, you know, there's some names that uh, uh, stand out. And if you guys see anybody that you would be willing to go after, please, in the comment section below, let me know who you're targeting. There's going to be names that I'm assuming won't be on this list that might be coming down to unhappy players maybe you know uh, trades that come, uh, come out of nowhere because we've seen that develop already in the NFL year with guys like JJ Watt and Orlando Brown both of which are guys I think the Chargers should at least look at in acquiring from those teams so before we do get started guys uh, as a reminder I am giving away a Keenan Allen jersey to one of you guys subscribe to this channel there's gonna be a link in the description follow that very easy instructions you also notice if you go subscribe to my Madden ultimate team channel that's worth three entries so this is a thank you to you guys for so much uh, on the support on this channel and my new channel. Hopefully this goes to a good home. And with that, guys, let's kick this one off. Before we do, hit us up with a like and sub if you do enjoy this content. The small amount of time you guys take to hit the like, sub, and bell notification helps me out a lot. Let's get into this video. Lights, camera, action. Potential cap casualties for every single team in the NFL. Let's take a look at this article here, man. There's going to be a couple of names I think that the Chargers fans have been clamoring for. Maybe a couple of new names that uh, haven't been on our radar before. One of them has been Akeem Hicks. I haven't really thought about Akeem Hicks getting cut from the Bears, but uh, apparently uh, in saving $10.5 million, it's got to be something they at least think about. And if Akeem Hicks hits the open market... The Chargers got to at least think about it, right? He's got some history with Brandon Staley in the Vic Fangio era of uh, the Chicago Bears. I think that uh, would be a great pickup for the Chargers. Now, again, just because it's listed at $10.5 million saved doesn't mean that's what we're going to be able to sign him for. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Sometimes it'll be a, a little bit over. Sometimes it'll be a little bit under. But um, as far as a scheme fit, moving to 3-4 and stuff like that, Akeem Hicks would definitely be a name the Chargers should consider. Everybody else, Jimmy Graham, Bobby Massey, Buster Screen, 
maybe a pass for me. Bobby uh, Massey might be a good depth add uh, just in case because, because we have seen issues with Brian Bulaga and his health. But other than that, I think uh, the big boy on this one is definitely Akeem Hicks for me. The Bengals, Geno Atkins, Bobby Hart, Giovanni Bernard, BJ Finley. I think these are all guys that are an easy pass for me. But uh, I think these moves would definitely help out the Bengals. They're in a really good cap situation right now, so I wouldn't see the need to cut a guy like Geno Atkins. But um, you never know. They really need to help that offensive line spend up on that area for that team. The Bills. A couple of names actually come to mind at first glance here. John Brown, they'd be sa saving around $8 million. He'd be a pretty good pairing for Justin Herbert in that big arm. Nice, speedy, uh, wide receiver. You got you to gotta consider that. Uh, Mitch Moore, center. They'd be saving around $5 million. The Chargers, what's our answer at center right now? I don't know. Maybe Mitch, I love Mitch Morse. I think that would be a great ad if he happens to get cut by the Buffalo Bills. Everybody else, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Let's take a look at the Broncos. Now, here's one that I see a lot of Chargers fans asking questions about. Char uh, director, should we go after Von Miller this offseason? And honestly, uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if he fits the culture of the Chargers, but he would definitely fit the scheme that the Chargers are moving into in 3-4. One of the best uh, uh, pass rushing outside linebackers in the league. The issue here I'm seeing, though, is that Von Miller does have some injury concern, especially from this last season, and uh, he's going to be a bit pricey. I'm going to assume around $11 million. If I'm going to be taking a risk like that, I would rather risk it on a guy like Jadavian Clowney, who's definitely a lot younger and uh, definitely will be a lot cheaper. But that I just pointed this one out because I do feel like uh, Von Miller is going to be brought up a lot. To me, it's a pass, but let me know what you guys say in the comment section below. Now, again, the Broncos do have an interesting relationship with the Chargers, not just as a uh, AFC West rival, but uh, our coach, Brandon Staley, does have a connection to a lot of these players, A.J. Bouye, uh, Jarrell Casey. These would be guys that you have to consider coming to the Chargers. Again, most of these guys are passes for me. I would say maybe Jarrell Casey is kind of a maybe for me. You rotate him with Linval Joseph. They'd be two of the best nose tackles in the league, honestly, and I think that would be a pretty lethal pairing, but that's who I'm thinking for the Broncos. The Browns, uh, what's their cap situation looking like? I didn't think it was that bad. The Browns, they are at $29 million. Okay. The one thing interesting here, I'm not gonna, I'm not interested in either Sheldon Richardson or AJ or Adrian Claiborne, but as there is every season, there are rumors that they might be trading away Odell Beckham Jr. Take it for what you will, okay? I have been hearing a lot of rumors that the Chargers are going after uh, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. Now, whether or not you agree with that move, it's just one of the rumors I've been hearing more about. Like, one of the more likely um, pickups for the Chargers this offseason is Juju. Now, my question for you guys in the comment section below, would you be willing to give up maybe like a third or fourth uh, maybe it would be a second round pick for Odell Beckham Jr. Or would you rather pick up uh, Juju Smith-Schuster? Kind of interesting. It just uh, it would, Who would you rather have on the Chargers? More importantly, if we picked up OBJ, uh, what number would he wear? <laughs> Next up, the Buccaneers. Now, the Buccaneers, Donovan Smith is interesting. I didn't even think about him hitting the open market. That would be a pretty good one. But I, I'm more interested in their free agents, I think. Uh, Shaq Barrett, Levante David. There's a couple of really, I think even Dominic and Sue is going to be a free agent this year, right? So they might not have a lot of cap space already. And if they do, they're probably going to have to use a lot of it to re-sign a lot of players. So I can see the logic behind a lot of these cap casualties too. But the only one here I'm really interested in is probably Donovan Smith. The Cardinals. Right off the bat, there's a pretty big name right there, Justin Pugh. He's been pretty good. He was with the uh, Giants for a while too, right? He'd be an awesome pickup. I think if the Chargers elect not to pick up or extend or bring back Forrest Lamp, uh, if we decide maybe to get rid of uh, Trey Turner, Justin Pugh would be an answer that uh, I wouldn't be too upset about if he hits the open market. Now, the Chargers, we already talked about this. Trey Turner, probably the most likely right now. doesn't mean it's going to happen, okay? He's still young. Maybe he had an off year. Maybe the Chargers give him another shot. But as of right now, he's the most likely player to be a cap casualty for the Bolts. Casey Hayward, I'm kind of on the fence with this. I really want him to come back. But again, in the AFC West, you need a lot of speed at defensive back. I do think Casey's lost a step in those regards, but I, I, I would hope that he stays with the Chargers. The Chiefs. They don't really have anybody listed here, do they? I, I can't really think of anybody from the Chiefs that I would want. Uh, maybe free agents is uh, uh, Robinson, their wide receiver. Is he going to be available? I don't know. I wouldn't mind going after in a trade for like Miko Hardman, who I wouldn't give up if I were the Chiefs. But the Chargers need an answer at speedy wide receiver. So that's the reason I bring it up. The Colts are in a great cap situation. I can't see them letting go of anybody that would be really valuable for the Chargers. If they get rid of Jack Doyle, that's a pass. I, I want to re-sign Hunter Henry. 
Cowboys, Anthony Brown, maybe Chris Jones. I think the big story here is Dak Prescott, though, right? Do they let Dak Prescott walk? I've been hearing rumors. I've been hearing rumors that Dak Prescott's probably going to be gone from the, uh, the Cowboys. Of course, this doesn't concern the Chargers. It's just, you know, NFL jargon. Where is he going to go? What are the Cowboys going to do? at right, quarterback if they decide to let him go. Interesting. Dolphins. Bobby McCain. Got a couple of nice defensive backs. Bobby McCain, Eric Rowe. Again, I want more speed, more youth, I suppose. After seeing what the uh, the Bucks did, I kind of want a semblance of that. Wow, did that turn out into a great defensive back unit after a couple of seasons through the draft. Jakeem Grant, maybe. Albert Wilson, maybe. I think a lot of passes for me from the Dolphins. Even though they had a really good the, the defense this year, I, I don't know. I, I would say look in a different direction. The Eagles, a terrible cap situation right now. Deshaun Jackson, he's old. He's still fast. A maybe. Maybe a pass. A Zach Ertz, some people have been saying if we let go of Hunter Henry, he might be a good answer. I think he's somewhere around like 30, 31 years old. Marquise Goodwin, Alshon Jeffrey, Malik Jackson, maybe. A lot of passes for me from the Eagles as well. Falcons, Ricardo Allen, that's a maybe for me. Allen Bailey, uh, James Carpenter, I, I would go after him. They would save $4 million. The Chargers would get a nice answer. Again, that's in the uh, terms if we let go of Trey Turner, Force Lamp, stuff like that. 49ers, D Ford. Now, D Ford, defensive end, they're in a 4-3 out there in San Francisco, right? So maybe that's a pass for us, but maybe you can play outside linebacker. You never know. Weston, uh, Weston Richburg, though, center. Again, I'm not sure what the Chargers uh, answer right now is at center. I would love to go after Corey Lindsley, but if we don't, maybe we go after a guy like Weston Richburg. I'd be cool with that. Uh, next up, the Giants. Wow, at first glance, there's a couple of guys that would make me really excited. Finally, we're hitting on something that gets me excited as far as prospects. Kevin Zeitler. You really think that they would cut Kevin Zeitler? Uh, what's the cap situation for the Giants right now? Let's take a look. Uh, the Giants. Can we find them on this? The Jets. Uh, Giants, 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 Giants. Right here. New York Giants at 18. They got around $8 million in cap. Okay. So I can kind of see why this would make sense. Kevin Zeitler would be a great ad for the Chargers. The other one over here, Nate Solder, a great ad for the Chargers. If either one of these guys hits the open market, I would hope the Chargers go after both of them. Honestly, doesn't mean you have to sign both of them, but just at least look into adding them to your offensive line. I still think they're both great players. Everybody else is probably a pass for me. Jaguars. Jaguars aren't going to let go of Andrew Norwell, right? There's no... And Bri Brandon Linder, they're both pretty good offensive linemen, and the Jaguars have crazy good cap space this season. I can't see that happening. If it does happen, though, this is an obvious go after. Even AJ can or Khan or whatever. All these offensive linemen are pretty good. I would say upgrades for the Chargers. Andrew Norwell, definitely the best one, though. Brandon Linder would be a great uh, answer at center for the Chargers as well. The Jets. Henry Anderson pass. Alex Lewis, maybe. Uh, the Lions... Desmond True, I had to pause here for a second because Desmond True font, I, I used to think of him as a great cornerback. The only way I would see him coming to the Chargers is if they think he could have kind of like a resurgence the way Xavier Rhodes did. But still, I think I'm over it. I think I'm over the thought of any uh, additional cornerbacks over the age of 30. I want speed. I want efficiency. Everybody else on this team is still probably a pass. Maybe Danny Shelton, but still, nah, no, no, no Lions for me. Packers, Preston Smith, eh, possibly. Ricky Wagner, possibly. Christian Kirksey, maybe. I don't know. Not too exciting anything from the, the, the Packers for me either. Uh, the Panthers, Quan Short. Nah, none of that. None of that. None of that gets me excited either. Uh, the Patriots. Who the, the Patriots had a pretty good cap situation, right? Yeah, they're number four in the league with $68 million. So the, I can't think why they would get rid of Marcus Cannon. Either way, we wouldn't pick him up because we already have a right tackle. Yeah, I, I don't see that happening. Raiders. Trent Brown. Now, the Raiders, I remember, they were in a tough situation. I was talking to a Raiders fan the other day. Um, the Ra Raiders down here at 25. Almost $10 million over the cap. Okay, so if we're to poach anybody from the Raiders, Trent Brown might not be a bad idea if he can switch to left tackle. He's a bit younger, right? I think. I don't know. Am I thinking somebody else? Well, Tyro Williams. Does he make a return to the Chargers? If we get rid of uh, Mike Williams, again, who I hope we don't, Tyra Williams comes back. Maybe he'd be a uh, good number two once again. Marcus Joyner is a maybe. I don't know. Nobody really gets me excited by the Raiders. I I, I don't know. That, that Trent Brown's probably the only one, and we don't really need a right tackle. Rams. <laughs> Andrew Whitworth, man. He, the dude's like a billion years old, but he's still really good. Maybe he's like a temporary, like a Band-Aid on a bullet wound kind of thing for, for the charge. I think he did get hurt this season as well. Rob Havenstein, we don't need a right tackle. Michael Brockers. Ooh, Michael Brockers. 
I didn't even think about him being uh, available in the free agent pool. That'd be interesting. Again, another guy from the Brandon Staley system that really had a lot of success. Uh, but the Chargers, as far as the Rams players, I think we're mostly connected to John Johnson and uh, Leonard Floyd. Yeah, Leonard Floyd. Um, so maybe all these guys are passes for me as well. The Ravens, uh, LJ Fort. Eh. He was okay with the uh, Steelers at one point, right? But I, I think it's a pass for me. Now the Saints. The Saints are in the worst cap situation in the NFL right now. They're going to have to make a lot of moves. And this is why you guys have seen me talk a lot about trying to get uh, Marshawn Lattimore. I would be willing to give up a first. And, of course, more to get Marshawn Lattimore to fit that uh, scheme with uh, Brandon Staley. But if there's other guys that we could go after, Kawan Alexander might not be a bad idea. He's a good coverage linebacker, right? Really fast. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Janoris Jenkins, cornerback. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Nick Easton might be a good pickup. Malcolm Brown, Morstead, Hill, Latavius Murray. Murray's kind of a maybe if we want to like throw in a nice power back with the, or with the Austin Eckler. I was hoping to see more names that got me excited from the Saints because they're going to be on a fire sale, honestly. And honestly, I would say any name on the Saints is kind of up for grabs via trade. You're not going to get Marshawn Lattimore. You're not going to get, uh, what's his name, uh, Kamara. You're not going to get their superstars for cheap. But I would say there's a price for everything, right? Saints need draft capital? I don't know. Just keep an eye. Just keep in uh, mind on what the Saints could be doing. The Seahawks, uh, Carlos Dunlap. Eh, wow, they would save $14 million. I would definitely say uh, get him off your roster. And Quandre Diggs, maybe. What's their other defensive back that's a free agent this year? Um... I don't remember. He's one of the younger guys. Very, very talented. That's somebody that I'm I'm, I'm just drawing a blank on his name. He's a really good cornerback. That's one guy I would target from the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, the Steelers, Joe Hayden pass, Vince Williams pass. Texans, Benardrick McKinney's a maybe. Nick Martin would be great. I think he's their best offensive lineman, right? Like the offensive line of the Texans is atrocious, but I think Nick Martin's like the one guy that stands out. Zach Fulton maybe a little bit too. I don't know. Why are the Texans so bad? I, I think of uh, Nick Martin and Zach Fulton as pretty competent offensive linemen. I don't know. Texans, Adam Humphreys, Kenneth Vaccaro, eh. Vikings, Riley Reef. I think I read something this morning that Riley Reef was actually extended, which they already have another left tackle, right? So why are they doing that? I don't know. That would have been the guy for me. Anthony Barr would be exciting, but I think he's lost his step. Kyle Rudolph's a, a strong pass. Washington football team. Jonathan Bostick's kind of a maybe, but everybody else knows. So I don't know, man. I was hoping to see more names. Again, this is more me like live reacting. I was hoping to see more names that got me excited, but there's going to be more. There's going to be more names that are definitely cap casualties that we don't see coming. We're going to see names that uh, want traded out of their uh, respective teams like uh, J.J. Watt and Orlando Brown Jr., which we've been talking about a lot, which, again, I hope the Chargers go after Orlando Brown so hard. I, I think that would be the perfect answer to getting a uh, franchise left tackle while also freeing up your 13th overall pick. I don't think we should trade our first pick for him, but I do think we should give him a nice trade package for Orlando Brown, give them some value. But um, in the comment section below, let me know some players that you think could be parting ways from their team if it's via trade, via cap casualty, whatever, that you hope the Chargers would be going after, okay? From this list, the guys that got me most excited, I think were actually from the New York Giants. The Giants have a couple of really nice offensive linemen uh, that I would love the Chargers to pursue. Kevin Zeitler, Nate Solder. Interesting, very interesting. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hit us up with a like and sub on your way out. If you did enjoy this content, we'll see you next time. And as always, bolt up and stay frosty.